evening folks welcome back to Kirkville farm thanks for joining me here in the chicken house if you're a return viewer thanks for watching every day we really appreciate the folks that come back every day they comment on what we're doing they ask lots of questions which by the way here on the weekend we are going to do a Q&A session on the farm so don't forget go down below check your questions in the comments section be more than happy to compile them all and answer them if you're new to the channel Thanks for tuning in. That's fantastic. Don't forget, go down below, click subscribe. Maybe when you're done this video, go binge watch a whole bunch of other ones. And again, that's going to leave you with all kinds of questions, I'm sure. So come back here and drop your questions in the comment section. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as we can here. So for the routine viewers, you'll know that uh, we usually try and put out a video every single day as much as we possibly can. But there are days where that just can't happen. Yesterday was one such day. Yesterday was Canadian Ag Day, so it was kind of a big day. It's kind of a big deal, right? But we didn't get a video out. Well, why didn't we get a video out? Well, sometimes life gets in the way. A lot of our, you know, the projects we work on are dependent entirely on off-farm income. We gotta work, we gotta make a living. So, had a full work day, come home from work, and uh, one of our rams was out. Well, so that was a challenge because the electric fencer we installed the other day isn't really uh, snapping very hard. So I'm not sure if the ground rod's not in far enough or just exactly what's going on there, but we're gonna troubleshoot that one here shortly. The other thing that happened is there was a massive hailstorm come through. Yeah, crazy, it's February, right? Why are we getting a hailstorm come through? It was more like ice pellets than hail. Anyways, one of our chickens was trapped outside. I shouldn't say trapped outside, too dumb to go inside. And uh, subsequently was killed in an ice storm, very tragic. Um, you know, it, I couldn't I couldn't make this stuff up. Like it would almost be comedic, but it's it's not funny because it's never it's never funny to lose an animal. But uh, yeah, it's just it just it just speaks to you know I guess chickens and the fact that they do require a lot of management and and there's something called slippage. Slippage is what you know the losses you take when you're not on farm, and it's, it's exactly a prime example of yesterday, especially being Canadian Ag Day. That's the reality. Is if you're if you're dependent on off farm income, and you're not around you're going to take losses. Fortunately, it was only a chicken and not, uh, you know, not one of our rams or, or one of our ewes that obviously costs a lot more money. Anyways, getting back to the subject at hand here. I'm in the chicken house. Why am I in the chicken house? So the other day I did a video on how we could cook a ham in the compost pile in our chicken house because it gets so hot. Usually, I've done a few of these videos. Usually after I tell you about how hot the compost pile gets, I've got to tell you how to manage the humidity in the compost pile. And that's exactly what happened today. So we piled up the compost pile and then the chickens, for some reason, they decide to just, you know, spaz out and spill all their water everywhere. Typically, we'll keep the water outside the chicken house, well outdoors. We went through a big, what we call a polar vortex. And uh, so we had to move the water inside, even though it is a, a you know a no freeze chicken water. We found out it's only good to minus 17 degrees Celsius, and then it does freeze. So when we were in that minus 40, minus 50 range, yeah, we needed that water inside. But this compost pile yesterday was chucking massive heat. In fact, uh, I think it was around 65 degrees. So I stacked it up again yesterday, and I just want to take a look and see what it's cooking at here this evening. So underneath this little divot here, I've got a thermometer buried in here. And you can see if I just get in right in there, the compost pile is at 80 degrees Celsius. So that's, I mean, that's warm enough. If you reach in there, you'll burn your hand. And so for us, this compost pile, this deep litter, deep bedding method, this is the secret. This is all we have in here to get our chickens through that minus 40, minus 50 really adverse weather conditions that we have here in Northern Alberta. Um, and, and lots of folks have had mixed results with this. And I will say, you know, despite how it might be touted, it is not a set it and forget it method. It does require a lot of management. Today is a prime example. I got my shovel, we've kicked the water out and I've got to scoop up some of the wet material that the chickens have had their little party. Because if this thing's, if this thing's making heat, and it's a huge portion of this is just chicken manure. The chicken manure gets wet, starts cooking off, you make ammonia. And that's uh, that's a chicken keeper's worst enemy. So what am I gonna do about it? Well, gonna get the shovel, get all that wet stuff forked out. And then I'm gonna make this whole pile move over to here. And then I'm gonna make the pile that's over here move over to there. And then I'm gonna move it over from there, 
back to there. So I'm going to make sure that pile is well aerated and it's going to get 80 degrees right now. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to see if we can get this to 90 degrees and specifically why I want this to happen is because it's going to cook off all that moisture and it's going to, you know, the ventilation in the coop here, all that humidity is going to leave the coop and then I don't have to worry about ammonia. So not only that, that high rise in temperatures, it comes up, 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 is critical for killing pathogens. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about chicken manure here. We're not talking about lavender oil. It's not the cleanest stuff. There is some management you have to do for pathogens. The easiest way to do is just get it cooking hot and then it's going to blend with the wood shavings. It's going to get in that beautiful, rich compost. And this is going to be one question we're going to answer in our Q&A on the weekend. What's the difference between hot compost and hot manure? Chickens are, yeah, I mean, there's no better way to explain it than to use chickens as the prime example because they have both hot manure and hot compost. Anyways, enough dallying around. I got to get this pile moved. So let's get after it. see as I was digging that out there that things were getting a little bit steamy in the chicken house and that kind of brings me to my next point lots of folks wonder about humidity in the chicken house as well as humidity in their deep bedding so in order for the deep litter the deep bedding to compost down there is a certain amount of humidity required in order to make that work chicken poop in and of itself is 85 percent water usually that's all the moisture you need however if you're noticing that your deep litter is not generating any heat at all it could be the case that humidity isn't high enough. But if you notice that your chicken house starts to smell like uh, bleach or, or cat urine, something like that, that give that a real ammonia, whew, take your breath away, that's a good indicator you got too much humidity and it's at a dangerous level. Good indicator is to reach into your pile, grab a handful of it, and you should be able to crumble it still. And that will tell you that you're not too humid, but what about humid enough? So if you take that same pile and you scrunch it up, it should, it should stick together, but easily, easily crumble and disperse. You don't want it to squish and turn into like a, like a poopy snowball, but you don't want it to just, you know, when you squish it, just turn to dust again. You do want a little bit of sticking action in order to know that you have humidity in your pile. Now that I moved that compost pile here, there and everywhere, I'm gonna let the chickens back in the house and they're gonna work and till and scratch and dig and, and do some magic chicken stuff. And then I'll come back in later today, maybe later this evening after the sun goes down, everybody's in bed and I'm gonna stack it all back up in this corner and let it get warm again. Why it's super important this stuff heats up, gets hot, hot, hot is basically, yeah, it comes back down to that pathogen thing. Not only do we wanna make really good compost as quickly as we possibly can, we want to make sure that the compost has actually killed all the bacteria, like the, the bad bacteria in it, because this is going to go into not just our flower garden, we're talking our vegetable garden. This is the stuff that's going to touch the food that we eat, right? We want it to be good. So that's why I usually got no qualms about reaching my hand into a hot compost pile, because I know if it's hot that, you know, that the bad bacteria has been killed out of it. The other th beautiful thing I love about this chicken, uh, shavings compost it really comes down to the fact that there's no there's no hay there's no straw there's no this is not like uh just random compost where things come in and it could be full of weeds or seeds or anything like that this is purely just chicken manure and pine shavings so once this thing has composted fully made some of that beautiful black gold and cooled back down you can spread it directly on the soil and i don't have to worry about going and chasing after it you know, because of all the weeds and everything else that comes afterwards if your compost hasn't actually cycled properly. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you didn't find it useful or it left you with more questions, that's fine. Chuck those questions down in the comments section below. We will be sure to come back. I'll reply to them in a future video as well as I'll reply to them into the comments section so we don't lose anybody. But for now, I'm gonna work on uh, pounding that ground pin in and the ram pen so I can get that thing snapping and keep the rams inside. So I'll let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.